In December 2022, I produced a video about the orcas that had been attacking boats off the Iberian Peninsula. I have put a link to it in the sources if you would like to look at it, but a lot has happened since I wrote it, and it is worth an update. Perhaps the most surprising update is the news that on June the 19th a yacht was involved in an interaction with an orca while sailing from Lerwick, the main port on the archipelago of Shetland, to Bergen in Norway. Dr Rutten was fishing for mackerel at the time of the incident, with a single line off the back of the boat. The lone orca repeatedly hit the hull, then disappeared for a while, and then came back two or three times and circled a bit. It is most likely that this orca is a North Atlantic Type 1 orca, which lives in the waters around Norway, Iceland and Scotland. They are known to be generalist eaters, as they feed on herring and mackerel, and have also been seen to eat seals. The behaviour is similar to that seen off the Iberian Peninsula, but that is 2,000 miles away, and experts are pondering as to how this behaviour could have come about. Has it somehow been passed on to the Atlantic Type 1 orcas, or perhaps it is just a one-off incident? We will have to wait and see if any more such incidents are reported. The most recent incident involving the Strait of Gibraltar orcas occurred a few days ago, during an endurance sailing race on a leg from the Netherlands to Italy as the yacht approached the Strait of Gibraltar. At the moment, the orcas are known to be hanging out west of the Gibraltar Straits, waiting for the Atlantic bluefin tuna, which are their primary prey, to leave the med after spawning. The tuna do this in July, and then head west and north with the orcas following. At least three orcas approach the boat, and in a fantastic underwater video of the orcas, you can see one nuzzling the rudder. It really is quite sweet and worth a little look. The link to the video is in the sources. In another video of the same incident, the orca has been seen running its nose into the hull. You can see that this is not an aggressive interaction at all, just pure curiosity. The reason why the Strait of Gibraltar orcas are bumping hulls and damaging rudders has yet to be determined. But as more data is collected on the incidents, I personally feel that they are just playing. And I am wondering whether they are interested in the rudder as they look a little like tuna. Does anyone else think that? And that the youngsters involved are just learning how to catch their prey. This is what orcas do. They are taught by their mothers or grandmothers how to catch their prey. Each population of orcas have their own particular method of catching prey, which can be anything from grabbing unsuspecting sea lions from a beach, to how to produce the correct waves to wash a seal from an ice flow. If you're interested, I have made some videos on the hunting techniques of orcas, and again I have put the link in the sources. It has been observed that the older orcas seem to be teaching the younger ones how to attack the rudder, at least that was the case in the beginning. A paper published in May 2022 discussed this new behaviour found in the Strait of Gibraltar orcas, a subpopulation which is critically endangered. 31 orcas were identified, of which 9 individuals interacted, consisting of two separate groups, although at times these two groups did associate with each other. As you can see from the diagram, Group 1 is formed by three juveniles, two of which are siblings. On one occasion, the mother of the siblings, known as Gladys Herbley, was seen observing their antics away from the yachts. One of these siblings was seen to have an open, lacerated wound on the head, but there is no indication as to how this wound came about, and has caused speculation that this could be a reason for the interactions that the orca has suffered a traumatic experience and is seeking vengeance. But that is just one theory, no one knows for sure. The second group was formed by a mother called Gladys Blanca and one of her offspring, and two other orcas that are her sisters. In this group, another orca called Gladys Lamari was once seen observing. She is the mother of Gladys Bianca and her two sisters, and so grandmother to the youngest orca of this group. It is these matriarchs that have been observed coming up to the yachts and demonstrating to the younger orcas how to charge into the rudder and then watch as the young orcas repeat the technique. I am in no doubt that some of these interactions are terrifying, with some of the interactions being more like attacks 
coming completely out of the blue and targeting the rudder and breaking it very quickly. But some have reported the incidents as being playful, first hiding underwater with no bubbles or movement under the yacht, perhaps like a game of hide and seek. And at other times, they swim far away, only to circle back underwater and wait again, ready to attack. And to this observer, it seemed like the orcas wanted the crew to move the rudder or yacht so they could keep playing. Some interactions have been reported where the orcas spin the boat around and push it and they are clearly having the time of their lives playing until eventually the rudder breaks off and they lose interest. And some boats have been pushed for up to four knots and reported as the orcas playing. Sometimes these more recent interactions are by a single orca and sometimes it's up to six. The behaviour is now being copied by other orcas and 17 individuals can now be identified as taking part in these interactions. For such an intelligent species, it is very easy for them to reproduce behaviour through social learning and they learn not just vertically from one generation to another but also horizontally from their peers. In a rapidly changing environment, it is advantageous for orcas to be able to learn from each other. However, orcas have been known to have cultural fads that don't have any real benefit to the group and the behaviour usually dies out very quickly. A lovely example of this occurred in 1987 when a few orcas off the coast of Washington started carrying salmon on their heads. There is no practical reason why they should do this, they just did it. First of all, a female who was part of the critically endangered southern resident population was spotted carrying a dead salmon over her nose. Over the next six weeks, this behaviour not only passed to her own pod, but also the other two pods that make up this population. Eventually, the fad disappeared. Let's hope this happens in this case, before someone gets hurt. The fear of many scientists working with orcas, and myself, is that if a person gets injured, perhaps by falling over as the orcas bump the yacht, then people will resort to measures to protect their yacht that are going to be harmful to these awesome creatures and which will undoubtedly be illegal. There have already been reports of this happening. We do need to remember that it is us encroaching on their environment and not the other way around. The Cruising Association, in collaboration with the GTOA, have been doing a lot of work on collecting data about the incidents and providing information about methods to reduce the damage caused by the orcas, which will, importantly, not harm them and be legal. Next week I will be uploading another video outlining their findings. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends and don't forget to turn on your notifications.